I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're gonna do an Inkscape tutorial that actually combines two previous tutorials. We're gonna make some vector landscape art, specifically using the spray tool to make the star field. In previous tutorials, we made this star chart, and this uses real data specific to a location and time. And if you wanna do that, go check that one out. The last tutorial, we made this 2D flat vector art, but for today, I wanna to combine the two. So we're gonna do this number right here, and I'm calling it Bedtime Star Field. If you wanna follow along, this is what you can learn in this tutorial. We'll make a gradient with multiple color stops to go from the night sky to like the orange horizon. I'll show you how to make this cloud effect using the drip pen and then a the blur, it's very easy. For the fog down here, there's another texture tool called Felt. I'll show you the settings for that to kind of make a felt, foggy, misty feel. And finally, the main point of this tutorial is the spray tool. So I can show you how to make the star field, random stars, artistic stars, where you can place them where you want. If you do want to use the exact data, you could combine the two tutorials. Just go back to see the stellarium.org is the place where you get the live star charts, and you can drop that into this. So let's begin. If you notice in the corner down here, I brought in a color palette. This is what I'm gonna be using just to make the tutorial go quickly. But as you play along, you can change the colors to go any schemes that you prefer. So let's grab the Create Rectangles and Squares tool. And we'll draw out a rectangle. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna stamp out the final project at the end. Now mine's red with a black stroke. So if you don't have the Fill and Stroke menu, it's this paintbrush thing in the corner. I'm gonna click on Fill and then I'm gonna to go to the, the top. This is like the darkest of my night sky. And then stroke, that means like the black outline. It's hard to see here, but I'm gonna X out of that. I don't need to stroke at all. If you're new to Inkscape and you've never used the gradient tool, let me show you a basic gradient tool first before we go like real crazy with it, like triple, quadruple layers. So if I have my object selected here, if I'm on fill, I'll choose these like rectangles here. This is the linear gradient. So click on that and you're gonna get a bar. There'll be a square and a circle. The square is the start of your gradient and the circle is the end. The default will be whatever your color was of this object, that'll be the full opacity side and it's gonna go all the way to invisible. The first cool basic skill with the gradient is you can grab either side and move it around and change the direction and the values of your gradient. We're gonna go from the top to the bottom on this one and I actually don't want to have it go to invisibility. I'm gonna have it go to a color so if you click on the bottom, the circle on the, in this case, see how this like, you can't tell on the computer, but there's a hash mark. And this is the amount of transparency or opacity. So if I'm in the middle, it's gonna go from full opacity to halfway. And if you just go all the way there, then you lost your gradient. But I'm gonna keep it on full, but I'm gonna change the color. So I've still selected the circle side. And then just to show you, you can choose anything. I'll choose like pink. And that's pretty cool. Like you can, you can I, the gradient tool is one of my favorite features of Inkscape. So you can play with that. But this is not what we need in our case. I'm gonna make sure I have the circle highlighted and I'm gonna go to eyedropper. And this is gonna be the orange of my horizon line. So it's a little messy right now. This is why I'm gonna add some extra stops inside of the gradient. Since I know that the top part of my gradient is the exact color deep blue that I want, I'm gonna keep that, but I wanna bring it down so I have more of like, contrast against my stars. So maybe I'll bring it around here. The next stop, or at least the first stop, is gonna be adding some of this like teal in the sky. So I'll drop it maybe here. Double click and that gives you a new node. And this node you can change by then choosing the, and you can move it around if you want on the color wheel or just go to eyedropper, then teal. So don't worry about that hard line. I'm gonna manipulate it at the end. Then from there, I want it to go into like the upper atmosphere. So I'll click here, double click, there's another node. I'll go to eyedropper, like this light blue. And then down here, I, I wanna end off on that orange, that's the preset, top and bottom. But in between here, I'll go another double click, and then I'll go with like this peachy. <laughs> Peach, I don't know what that is, orange. I'm noticing that I'm, a, I'm slightly off here. If you wanna make it so it's a perfect up and down, you can do it visually, but if you hold control, it'll lock in a vertical or horizontal. So I just had control clicked and it went straight vertical. Also, I'm not sure, I know I went fast with the colors. I wanna have a little bit more vibrancy. I'll do double click on this orange and maybe go a little bright, yeah, like that. Just to have a little bit more value contrast there. 
Off camera, I tweak the gradient a little bit from the start node and the ending node and the intermediary ones. I like the way it looks now. So I'm gonna add some of the cloud atmosphere. And the way I like to do it, I like to bleed off the edge. So sometimes it's helpful to have a little bit wider work area. I'm just gonna widen it and we'll start from here. Let's grab the calligraphic tool, which is this thing right here. It looks like a, an old quill pen, so click on that. And this is gonna be, the settings aren't super important because all I'm doing is I'm gonna use it to create a line, which we, they can, we can then blur and make it look like a cloud. So my, my settings though, if you care, I have it on dip pen with three thinning 80. So it should probably use the last color we were using, and it is, so it's using this orange, so that's okay. I'll just to show you how the tool works, with three, it keeps it very thin. I'm just gonna scribble out like that. Let's just change it to white so we know where we're going. And I'm just gonna go nice and smooth. <laughs> just kind of wherever you feel like doing. That's enough right there. And then I'll go to down here on blur. I can blur it out, then change the opacity. And if I want, I can stretch it. Maybe make it more white. And you've got a layer of clouds. I put it up against the that white line there so I could break up so it's not quite a drastic change in the in the gradient. And there we go. So some of that will be clipped out, but that's basically the idea. Let's make some gray clouds too. I'll put it closer to the horizon. And one thing I want to point out when you're using the um, dip pen or the calligraphic tool, I don't want a stroke on it. So like I'll show you, if I draw out just anything right there, that looks fine. But if I go to blur it out, it might have a stroke just to keep in mind. So go to stroke, turn it off. And I'll, now I'll, I'll be able to draw my cloud. Maybe I'll go with like a gray. So I'll just, same thing, just scribble it out however you want it. Like that's pretty good. And then I'll just go to my fill. I'll make it more grayish and I'll change the blur opacity right there. It just looks like, you know, like at the end of a rainy day, there's some like residual clouds kind of going out there. For speed, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna grab it and then control D will duplicate it. And I can use the exact same cloud someplace else. I'll just stretch it out, reduce the opac. Oh yeah, that looks good. Fix the blur. And you've got yourself some more clouds, maybe one more. Control D again. This one, I'll, I'll have it be real thin. It's clicking. It's, so if you're trying to move your clouds and it snaps in, it's because you have your snap settings there. Snapping is usually great. It helps you line things up easily. I'm gonna undo the enable snapping. So then I can put my clouds wherever I want. This one will be really low. And we'll make it more, actually we'll make it darker darker and then we'll adjust the opacity to just barely there that's about enough time on the clouds let's make the horizon now i'll go back to the old rectangle tool and this one i'm going to go way off the edge to make sure the opacity is back to full and then we can do the foreground so the foreground is going to be just a rectangle you can just eyeball it right there change that color to this dark brown and let's zoom in all right it's tough to tell the difference there let's add a glow an easy way to do a glow is just you can grab any tool. I'll just do the circles and ellipses, and I'm going to make a nice wide oval. We'll change it to white or maybe like a yellow, like a yellowish glow. And you can blur that. Change the opacity to barely there. So right now it just looks like a total mess. But if I go to the hierarchy, so to get the hierarchy to show up, go to select objects. I have the glow selected, so I'm going to drop it down one. And that, <laughs> just one. It's still there, but it blended itself away. So then we can change the color of the glow to more of a white. It's subtle, but I think it does make a difference just even if you don't notice it overtly. It's just a nice little touch. Zoom out of there. Yeah, see? See what we're doing? Now, before I add my little mountaintop in here, I'm gonna add a little bit of like minimalistic terrain. So I'll go back to the calligraphic tool and see what it's set for. Something faded out. I'm gonna draw just scribbles just to see something behind the mountains this will be blurred out and most of it blocked but let's see how it looks so blur opacity down change the color a touch and that is good enough for that get rid of this one for our mountain in the front we'll go to the bezier pen tool and you can just draw one out if you're not familiar with the bezier pen tool it's not super intuitive so i do have a tutorial you can check that out if you want but for this, we'll go real quick. It's an adopt the last color, which we know. So let's change it just for now. Where's my color palette? We'll change it to this lighter of the two browns. Bring the opacity back up. I drew that too quick. So if you want to edit your shape, like let's say you have a specific mountain that you want, go to edit paths by node, and then you can grab several of the nodes and then drag them all at once. 
or you could change the, the curve lines on it. You could move them independently. <laughs> there we have some a jagged mountain. There we go. Let's get our color palette back in view. Part of the reason I want the mountain is I need something in the foreground that's gonna break this horizon line so I can connect the bottom of, my, of the composition to the top and all the stars, which is kind of like the main event. As for color, I want it to blend into the darker of the bottom. So let's go to the gradient tool. So I have the object selected. I choose gradient. And so I can edit the gradient. I click on the pencil tool and there's my bars. So I'll choose this one bar. This will be the initial color. And then down here, since the transparency is on the bottom, it's kind of making the whole thing transparent. I'll take that to full opacity. The top is already the right color. The bottom will change that color to the same color as the base. And from here, you can choose how much of it is going to be its own color and how much will actually blend into the bottom. Now let's put some fog or some mist around this mountain. So I've been using the watercolor texture effect a lot recently, especially in that like night sky thing, but it has some opacity issues. So when you wanna make that type of blurred out fog or watercolor effect, but you have it against like a darker background, then you can use this other one called felt. So first let's draw the fog, just a random shape that will become fog. It's gonna adopt the oldest color. So we'll go to maybe like an orange. We'll change that later. Go up to filters, textures, felt. And there you go. So it just, it looks bad now, but we'll try to change it. So initially you can change the blur. It becomes a little bit more fog-like. Change the opacity. Let's keep the opacity full for this example. And the color, we want it to be more like almost like a mist. So we'll go to just a like a black for now, like a gray. And let me just show you the settings in case yours doesn't look like this. For filters, you go to filter, filter editor. If you're Gaussian blur, I keep it around five. For some reason, it's at six right now. Let's see what happens at five. 5.0, 5 that's like a, a default setting that I like. Turbulence it just changes what the actual felt texture looks like. Displacement map moves it around and the rest of it, just don't play with too much. So the default setting should work. The only tip is make your item small and it makes the effect look better. So for here, let's put it now on top of here. We went too dark, so we'll go to fill and stroke. We'll whiten it up. That's too bright. And now we can go with our opacity and you can tint it too. So I might tint it over into like a, like that looks good. This piece of fog here, I might duplicate because I like the way it looks. So let's move this one, let's stretch this one out. This fog you can see is gonna be in front of my mountain. And this other one I had before, I'll drop it behind. So to drop this one down, make sure selector tool is chosen. And then on hierarchy, just drop it once. And there it goes. So it's now right behind our mountain. And our original fog, we can put in front of it. So you have it behind it, in front of it. Maybe duplicate that again. Maybe this this one could be real light. I played around with the fog and the positioning off camera here, but I wanna move on because it's time for the stars. So in previous tutorials, we actually pulled real star chart data, but if you're just doing it for artistic purposes, you can draw it and use this tool to just make it go quickly. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm going to make a small circle. I'll hold shift and control, make a tiny dot. And we'll turn it white, make sure there's no stroke on it. On the fill, we're on white, full opacity, and that, <laughs> that little star is gonna become a lot of stars. The tool we're gonna use is this spray can. So click on the spray can, and these are the settings I, I put together for you. So we have width 50, and that that is this circle thing. So that, that is the width that I'm gonna be shooting out my spray. It's going to be spraying out, see mode right here? spray copies of the initial selection. So if I have it right now, it looks like my selection is the sky. It'll shoot out the sky, which we, which we don't want. So click on your star, then go back to spray. So my width is 50, the amount is how many of those items it's gonna shoot. So I'm gonna do 30 at a time. Scale is the variation of the size. So I did 50, so I have some stars that are bigger than others. And scatter is the amount of randomness. So here we go. So I'm gonna click and hold and draw a couple stars. There you go. You can kind of put as much or as few as you want anywhere you feel like it. Got this one bright one down there. So if you don't like a star, they are, they're all different nodes. So you can actually zoom in and then remove a star if you don't like it. Or if you do wanna spell something out or make your own personal constellations, you can move them as if they're their own little nodes. Let's zoom out, let's clip this thing so we have it all together. I'm gonna group everything together, go way out in the no man's land, grab everything we can, control G, we'll group it, and I'll make a clipping box of the exact dimensions I want for my final. Doesn't matter about the color or the opacity, this is just a way to stamp out the final product. 
So I have everything grouped behind it, my clipping box is on top. I'll hold shift, collect everything behind it, and then go to object, clip, set. And there it is. That is our Inkscape tutorial project where we made a star field with the spray tool, added some clouds with the drip pen and some fading, and then did a foreground with our Bezier pen tool and then some felt texture for these clouds. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or you have any ideas for future tutorials, leave a comment in below and I'll see if I can make something happen for you. Thanks.